फ्रेंड्स 56 डेज ऑफ वॉर इन यूक्रेन एंड दे हैव बीन सम चेंजेस clear cut changes in the tactics as well as the strategy and on the ground as well first we start on economic fronts very few of them us is said to be plunging into economic crisis that you must have come to know european union is not different in fact the news from germany is that the german bosses unions are opposing boycott of russian gas they know without that they will be in deeper problem as far as imf is concerned it has scaled down the global gdp to sick to 3.6% still in positive but there are problem the global food and energy prices medicines are rising everywhere and there are a scarcity of this because of this war yes even in india the inflation rate is very high probably the highest in a decade or so and the government of india has blamed it on the, uh, for this rise on russia ukraine war coming on political front russian communist party interesting i mean nothing to do much with the wars but has moved a bill in its duma that the present russian flag should be replaced by the soviet flags a good social democratic work nothing more than that wherein different from this i would like to bring to your notice that malaysian government has said that approximately 50% of its 600 rohingyas refugees found the way and ran away from the in camment or prison or wherever they were kept but later on 50% of that were recaptured and brought back well that happens and uh, the last part as far as the political information is concerned i would like to tell you that ukraine has urged, urged russia that it should allow humanitarian ground on humanitarian ground a humanitarian corridor from mariupol naturally it is for those soldiers ukrainian soldiers who are stuck in the outskirts of mariupol that is still planned city where russia has given many many warnings more than 2 3 times and chance for them to come out of those rat holes and surrender but most of them haven't expected that they are anywhere between 2000 to 4000 and it's a big headache for russia as well and probably if they go for full out of war, full bombarding the that area that extremely fortified area it will destroy them but it is believed that even civilians are hiding there or probably the civil population is held up there as a shield by these new nazis or azov's battalion troops well we have come to on military point and this is very important now it is to be seen how this problem is solved how long they are going to sustain in fact the leaflets that were dropped from the air and few of those ukrainians troops who got them they have in my last video you might have seen crawled out of those prison holes or rat holes few of them were found dead shot in their back must be from their so called comrades from behind when they were trying to run away and to surrender without any arms and ammunition and with only some blank white paper on which they wanted to raise and show that they are the now those who are surrendering but were killed in that and also there is news that they are using heavy drugs to sustain the mental agony that would be death that is coming to them well we will not go in deep into that in the meantime the in the second phase of war as russia claims or maybe third phase of war the second was the withdrawal and recoupment the re supply of all arms of nations resting of their troops etc etc 
whatever may be on 56 to 57 day of war and starting from yesterday the kremina a very small township in uh, lugans area has been captured by lpr militia and of course with the help of russians and other things that's they are the first gain in the meantime there has been heavy heavy shelling very heavy shelling all these areas adjacent to uh, donbas Ma mariupol west of mariupol that is mykolo mykolev odisha still seems to be free of that in north if we go kharkiv and also lviv and kiev the capital which so far were free and last two three days we saw a huge huge explosion which kept burning for hours and everything is being used by russian military mlrs grats they call it long oblique medium range missiles these missiles are you know they are hypersonic very accurate and carry very lethal munitions aerospace forces that include seven helicopters and of course fighters and those fighters which are now flying very high keeping themselves safe from ukrainian air defense which are being reequipped by usa and nato however that one question that was coming to my mind again must have come to you that these heavy catchments heavy arms of nation that are coming from european countries nato usa england wherever possible even canada australia whatever they have they are supplying they are reaching ukraine of course from the western border maybe even by aeroplanes heavy aeroplanes one aeroplane was shot down in there immediately after when the russian flagship was sunk by ukrainian missiles so why are these guys selling billions and billions worth hundreds of millions worth arms of nations if they are being destroyed by the russian army military maybe some portion of it is reaching to ukrainians and also we hear that america uh, russia that and uh, uk as well and other countries also must be they are training ukrainian military on this bringing them in their own country and training them how fast will they train to use them as part and parcel of a soldier's life like it should be i mean to my mind it should be 3 to 6 months minimum but well whatever being done and even usa and others have said that the arms and ammunition the weapons may not reach to the correct hand which they want it can land up among the terrorists it can land up among those people who are who may create terrorism in eastern europe and other parts of europe still who is behind this decision is it joe biden is it nato head stiltenberg is it german or french premier or their president public president who were there or european union head or boris johnson or are they really actually those who are producing these weapons billions of worth and so far long time they have they had not sold it they were not sold they were lying idle and they have found some place who pays for it if they are being destroyed who were pays one thing is sure that war industries are getting back their remo their entire initial capital that they have used expertise and additional profits super profits not simple profits super profits that absolute as well as relative profits they are getting it back they are becoming richer in war the capitalist class becomes richer it is known they are the one let that be destroyed some part is reaching russia is bleeding i mean they are happy russian arms and munitions also being used being consumed in heavy amount and 
the working class is paying through their noses. In India, because of inflation, because of lack of jobs, the government of India has found a way out of this. That is communal violence in four five states, now in Delhi, in its capital city. Continuation, Hindu Muslim riots. And in other parts of the world, on racism is there. People are being suppressed on national issues, on creed, on caste, everywhere. The working people are not united and they are living in bad to worse condition. Be it pandemic, be it war, anywhere far from you. And your government has a, an excuse that you are paying extra because of that. And if you still rise, it will make you fight among yourselves. And if still you get united, there are police, there are military, other apparatus to crush your resistance. That is the relation. And of course, global warming continuing. Friends, understand the political economy behind the war, behind the internal rift that is happening in each and every country, be it communal violence, racism or whatever. Thank you.